and welcome back sleepyheads yes my voice does sound weird because i still have a cough a cold no fever though so i think i'm good now and yeah my stuffy nose a real bad stuffy nose welcome back what do i want to hug that gator subscribe like comment share to friends and loved ones i'm shilling my discord once again my social links if you want to check my tiktok go for it no matter yeah, welcome back. So, this time we're go uh, going or hunting down for ending number 4. I picked all the options here to have points for both Olivia and Inko. I think we're good. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Also, editor, sh show the link or you know what, the guide on the screen. Okay, thank you. That's what I've been following. There's also a Steam guide. Wait, what am I talking about? A guide on Steam bit more detailed and all that but yeah so sorry for my voice right now it, uh, it sounds weird so we're now confronting ben did i record this part in the other endings i don't think so is it if you haven't figured out figure figured it out can you leave olivia and i out of it then no okay fine you want to find something to blame someone to take responsibility away from me i know your guy my man the guy responsible for everything Look at this smug motherfucker. I hate Ben, man. Have I ever said that in the past videos? I think I have. But it's not enough. This guy is a two-faced bitch. Ben raises an eyebrow. Well, yes, that would be ideal. You. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, you are fucked. None of this would have happened if you hadn't hurt Olivia in the first place. He got cooked. What? He knows what I'm talking about, Principal Skater. And here you are four years later still up to the same tricks. Olivia's stuck at home, her wheelchair is busted, and she's heartbroken. Uh, oh my, I didn't know. Is she alright? And you're just bringing up this interpersonal drama. Please have some self-awareness. I have more important things to be worrying about, clearly. I don't care to be part of whatever house of cards you have set up here. Cool show, by the way, Kevin Spacey. Well, not now, but, you know, acting-wise, he's, he's pretty good. Damn it, I... Ben sucks in a sharp breath through his teeth, sagging heavily as he lets that air escape in a long sigh. Sorry, Mia. The plan's a bus. The fuck? How? I can't do it. Not like this. There are other things I can do for you, just not anyone's expense. The plan... Mr. McKnight, you mean to tell me Mr. Nito's right? Yo, String Bean, you know the stakes here. She has lots more than me to lose. All I gotta do is just tell Teach here that what Olivia did. Shit, she wouldn't. She, she would. Just one thing after another. You know we're talking about the damaged property. I'm telling you it's at the bottom of all this. I'm not taking the hit. I'm innocent. If I got to squeal to prove it, oh well. No! Skater throws her hands up in frustration. She's resigned to just being along for the ride, reaching for her lunch bag. I like this principle, man. She's like, you know what? You want to do some drama? Fuck it. Go for it. Go for it. Ben, I have to. I said no. There are other ways. Not good enough. This needs to come out. Mia, you do that and I dig out some of the skeletons in your closet. Oh, 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 this is spicy. Wait a minute. We're starting off hard here. Ben covers his mouth. The fuck did you just say to me? Oh, she, tur she, tur she turned to ninja there. A little bit. You heard me. Ooh, ooh, he's standing his ground. All right, all right. Self-respect. I can respect that. Finally, he has the cojones. He got the balls, you know what I'm saying? Mia stares Ben down like she's about to slash his guts open. He's trembling, but he doesn't relent. Oh, you'll regret that. You'll fucking regret that, Muck Knight. I ain't doing this shit. Have fun trying to bang Inko's girl or whatever. God, ah! She turns around and stomps out, stomps out of the room, completely ignoring all three of us. Man, my, my voice does sound weird. Holy shit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Another bout of silence overtakes the room. Scalar, Ben, and I look between each other. 
Well, that was eventful. Between Edigan's report, Inko's account, and whatever that was, I think I have enough to work with. But, but we didn't finish. Come on, Benjamin, don't you have some soul searching to do? He stares at her, bewildered. Seriously, Ben, please try to figure this out. Go back to class, the both of you. He still doesn't move. I opt to take the first steps towards the door, glancing back and motioning for him to do the same. Eventually, he follows me out of the office. All right, uh once we're out, I think I think to thank Ben. But why? He's the one that cues me and dragged me in there to begin with. He just fixes the own mess. Ben runs his hands through his hair. Oh, oh shit. I'm in trouble. You alright? I I don't know. Look, I'm I'm sorry about all that. Everything's just getting so complex. I feel like I'm losing it. I'm always juggling so many things and so many people have different rules. I can't let it start to get to me. He's gotta keep it up, right? What is it? Good question. I can't say. I'm sorry. I'll be fine. You should go. Is he actually a psychopath? Is this the American psycho I'm witnessing? With a nod, I start heading back to class. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, for the love of... Will you make up your mind? Oh, shit. I turn back, catching Ben's flinch. Is Olivia going to be alright? Oh, I tried to skip it because I was like, I feel like I've had this convert before. I'm going to visit her after school. I told her I like her. She told me she likes me. Oh, congrats. Thanks. And when you see her, could you tell Olivia, tell her I'm sorry? About then, I didn't mean for it to hurt her. her his fingers are clasped together in supp supplication. And while he looks sincere, I think you should tell her yourself once you see her again. You're right. I will. I give him a thumbs up and continue to lunch. Ooh, spicy drama. By now it's about- wait. Oh, this is- is this new? By now it's about lunchtime, meaning I can hang out with Damon and Liz. Definitely needed after all this. Welcome back, everybody. So we just got in here like at swimwear, you know, Olivia's room. And this is what Enko says. He sees blackness. Well, because he has the shades, my man. Why would you wear shades inside? You know what? Unless you have sensitive eyes. That's for sure. Olivia? The room is extremely dark. The only source of light is coming in from the entryway. I have to take my sunglasses off in an attempt to see through the darkness better. Olivia? The heck happened in here? Why is it so dark? Olivia? No response. Olive? Gotcha! Wow, my leg! My leg! Hi. Yo, this is... You know why I'm gonna say it's different? She's always slouching or in the in her bed. Or no, on her bed. In the bla under the blankets. You know, in a really sad, depressive state. This is opposite. This is the opposite of that. Oh my god. Her clawed fingers grip into my ankle tightly and it takes all my coordination to stay standing. Olivia, what are you doing? Let go! What are the lights doing out? How is it so dark? Um, reasons? I'm turning them on. Oh boy. I flip the switch. Olivia's laptop lies shut on her bed alongside the drawing pad. Someone's been sketching by the light of a digital screen. It looks normal enough. How is it dark? Da Olivia. Yes? Why is there a window painted over with black paint? The light coming in offended my black and heart, and my window became a canvas into the new darkness in my life? Yeah, it's dumb, I know. Olivia, are you alright? Uh. Olivia crawls back to her bed and flumps on it, continuing her deep sigh the whole way through. Hey. Yeah, this morning after you left, I got the idea of it. Whole speech and everything, something stupid about my old sketches. It was a moment of passion. A while later, I realized how silly it was, but the paint had already dried. At least the atmosphere is good, right? Wait, she's drawing as well. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, man. She sighs again into her mattress. Shit, this is embarrassing. I look at the covered window. I don't see why you'd be embarrassed. Padding over to her bed, I take the vacant spot right next to her. Shut up. Sorry. Shut up. Even if she says that, Olivia rolls herself closer to me. And very in character of you. Quit it. Oh wow, she's in a good mood, man. 
Okay, this is ending number four. We're going in there, but man, we are shooting an arrow straight right through Bullseye. Her, hand, her hands bat at me, though with no strength or animosity behind her blows, I'm able to simply slap back at her hands until I catch one. Hey. Her fingers curl around my hand. It's very you. Her cheeks puff out in an adorable pout that I can't help but smile at. I like that, alright? You're lucky that I you're lucky that I like you or else I'd chomp off your leg. She growls at my smile, clearly annoyed by her own lack of intimidation. Eh, I got used to it, build up a tolerance for it. So now I can see how Olivia really is. If you like me, you'd still do that. Her bluff called, Olivia burns her face against my thigh and growls louder. Whoa, 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 this is getting spicy here. What am I what the hell? But her fingers still cling tightly to my hand. Her head tilts just enough that she can peer at me with a solitary silver eye. And while her maw is muffled against my leg, I still clearly hear her say, Miss you. My free hand comes around, gently combs through her hair. One of the things I really marvel over is just how soft her hair looks. Oh my god, man. This is very... Well, my hair... My hair, on the other hand, it's stiff as a brick. Yes. You could argue that my hair is bricked up. Arguably so. What I'm saying is, I need to. Um, even when con with conditioner and everything, you have to. My hair just stands up. It's insane. That's why I usually just get a haircut. Like, uh, I think it's a, a school hair. You know, like a, a student haircut or whatever. You know, uh, clean, sh not clean shaven, but cut enough where it's. I not only feel fresh. But I, I don't really have to worry about my hair or whatnot, you know? Okay, going back to the game. I'm yapping again. Genuinely feels like I come to find my fingers run over the glossy green locks. You've just been in here all day? Olivia nods her head, nudging her scalp more against my hand. I see your setup there. Yeah. She hefts herself upright again. I've been drafting that painting all day. It's starting to come along. The laptop was just for lights and music. She passes me the oversized pad. True to her word, the sketches are looking more and more refined. Each one gets closer to the one that she's going for. Once it's done, I was thinking I could ask for it to be shown at the eulogy. Oh? Yeah, I think they let me? They better with all this effort they're putting in. Yeah. Wanna hear something weird? I've had a long day. Hit me. This painting, I think it's special. When I woke up this morning, I felt lost. Lost enough to block out the light of my room. Then I just remembered my promise. Then I just remembered my promise and I got to work. It still hurts. But when I'm working on it, it's like it hurts less. Because they're processing... Remember everyone, process your emotions. You can bottle them up. Or you can, you know, express them. Any... Oh, I just hit the mic. Nice one. Any, whatever method you think, as long as it doesn't hurt yourself or anyone else, correct? Process your emotions uh, properly. Bottling them up, ooh, it's, uh, I'd say, no closure for you. You're gonna be, you're gonna be having some problems moving on. Like, it's what I should be doing. Like, I'm doing it right now. Oh, there you go, heart demon. Yes, it's in, you know, martial arts cultivation mangoes and manuals. Yes, for those who don't know. It just means there's uh, there's something that's in your heart. Not literally, but in a sense emotionally or maybe a trauma that you have to tackle. I don't know. Like it's what I should be doing like I'm doing it right. That's not weird at all. Really? Come on now. Alright, it's super weird. I think less of you now. Huh, but really. You bite her lower lip thinking about something. It's missing something. She gestures to the page I'm on, the most rec recent sketch. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's vague. There's no detail. At the fountain I tried, I really did. But I cannot remember so much. And Inko, um, hey, absolutely. I'll take the best dang pictures you'll ever see. Thank you. First though, how about I let the sunlight back in here, alright? Uh, yeah. That's probably for the best. How would I go about doing that? I move the washcloth across the window pane slowly but surely scrubbing away the dried up paint in chunks. Good thing Olivia keeps spare bottles of paint. I was about to say paint thinner. It most likely work. 
Or at least Miss Payne has Olivia keep spare bottles ever since an incident involving a much younger and more rebellious Baronix smearing paint all over the walls. I like it when Olivia smiles, man. Feels like the world is just... The world is, a, is just a better place to live in. As I continue scratching some of the errant flakes of paint off with my fingernail, my ears pick up the sound of a digital camera going off. In my peripheral, I see Olivia holding her phone towards me. Taking a picture when I'm not looking my best? For shame, Olivia. Oh, hush, you look fine. Whoa, what can I say? A CP does look fine, no cap. What's so special you need to take a picture for? Nothing, just using it to mess with unstable human women by posting my catch on their forms. Ah, uh, that's neat. What? Most of the paint is gone anyway. I toss the rag outside and scramble to take a seat beside Olivia. She cackles herself a new post with a photo shows up. I've never heard of this place before, but it does look like a form specifically for women. That is to say, non-dinosaur. Isn't this that lizard lounge site Liz doesn't like? No, no, no. This is a rival site for only human women. We're, we're always messing with each other. Interesting. Olivia's post features that picture she just taken. Appended with the text, Mine now, skinny whores. Your days are numbered. There's a reply calling her dirty trigger. Okay. Olivia, I don't really appreciate being used for this sort of thing. Nah, nah, don't worry about it. It's cool. <laughs> See, they just IP banned me. You got banned just for that? Now nah, I can get around that super easy. And then I get to do it all over again. Their tears sustain me. Oh my god, is this... She's like the Anon of this world, but way more emotional. Or this uh, story. She's a shit poster. Holy shit. <laughs> Okay, that's enough internet. That's it. I'm taking you outside. Yes. I should go leave his leg to get her moving. Come on, you've been struck in here all day. Come to the world of the living. Though I insisted to live that I didn't mind carrying her, she opted to shamble her way towards the couch on her own. When she reaches the couch, she pulls herself right into the cushion long ways. She sprawls out and exhales. Well, we're out here. Now what? You dragged me out here, you tell me. I didn't think that far ahead. You're insufferable. If you see the skip at the top left corner, yeah, it's me checking out if this is new or old. If, you don't, it does, if it doesn't skip, okay, then I'll roll with it. Uh, there's some of Damon Vinny's games by the TV. There's some classic co-op games in there if you want to try one out. You sure? I don't really play games much. Yeah, it'll be fun, sort of like repayment. You carry me to the couch, now I carry you to victory. R. What a gamer. I stand before Damien's chosen collection of entertainment. There's definitely some plain DVDs mix in here. They're up there. You know what I've noticed? They're polar opposites of Anne and. and a, a reverse of the scenarios, right? A little bit of the reverse. Instead of Fang, Fang was like. Anne was the gamer one, correct? Anime lover and all that personality fab. While Fang was, a, was a, a more of a goth or no, emo kind of person this is quite the opposite here but this time instead of goth or what we have a rich delusionally optimistic person named In inko and we have the gamer anime watcher troll uh, internet troller shit poster olivia okay going back to the game i'm yapping again i pick one of the more worn out looking cases and show it over to my show it over my shoulder to olivia sorry she gives an approving grunt, so it seems like I picked well. Then this slides into the console, and I start setting up the TV. Huh? Is it not working? You gotta smack the left side. Vinny left some magnetic toy near the screen once. Smack! The TV comes to life. It's flickering screen displaying the console menu. I pick up two of the controllers to the floor, and... What are you doing? What? Oh, I'm used to playing like this. She rubs her head to the cushion next to her, inviting me to sit normally. So what's cool about this game is... Well, 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 ain't this interesting. Are you seeing what I'm seeing, sleepyheads? No, you're awake right now, so you're not so sleepy after all. You're not groggy. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's cool is the co-op campaign has its own story. We can just play through that because there's no way I'm letting you near the online scene yet. With a few quick button prompts, the game starts. She contemplates skipping the cheesy introductory cutscene she's seen dozens of times right now, but lets it play out for my sake. 
Now, the game starts proper and faced with a very specific problem. I am not good at video games. I'm good at watching them and listening to other people dissect them, but I do not play them. Okay, just follow my lead and shoot anything that even looks like it's moving. Right, uh, how? Olivia's already getting ahead in the game. I tried to follow, but now my screen is pointing to the floor. Huh? Did they do something wrong? Maybe the other stick. And now I'm moving, but still looking at the floor. Hey, start shooting already. Okay, uh, I try one of the tricky looking things on the back of the controller. Some arm manifests on my side of the screen, and there was something on the floor I'm looking at. I think that's a grenade. Yes. I died? I looked out to Olivia. She's looking at me with utmost horror. What? There's no way you are this bad. I told you I never play video games. Fine, fine. We'll do the tutorial and then start. With a few presses on the controller, we're back to the menu and then into some blank space area on the screen. Everybody never skip tutorials, my man. Any game. Learn the mechanics at the start. Then you can... You need to learn how to walk before you want to run. Correct? If you want to fly, you have to learn how to f fall and then glide safely. From there, boxes on the screen along with some AI voice read out the instructions for everything. I digested them slowly, having to double check the buttons on the controller as it went. Hopefully. We went back into the co-op campaign when Olivia felt confident I wouldn't ruin the run. And so we sat just running through the digital hallways of some military base, enjoying the simulated violence on screen. And just for a while, in this very moment, Olivia has no problems. After another few matches, Damon hops into the recliner. Hey, you guys didn't tell me we're starting a Friday gaming sesh. You kicking her ass yet, Inko? Uh, no, it's my first time playing. Oh, really? It's the co-op campaign. You'll get to it. I'm rooting for you. Yeah, dude, you're being an excellent diversion while I gun them down. Someone's home. I get up and answer the door. There are two incredibly bundled figures caked in snow. Oh, great Mormons. Hardy horror. <laughs> Alright. I'm loving this. It's a bit more uppity chippity. You know, we're a bit yippee. You know, happy. It's a bit happy. It's a bit happy. Happy time with the family. While the small boy looked unfazed by the cold, Sophia was shivering uncontrollably, even with extra layers of protection. Damien rushes to get some blankets for the two. Hello, Miss Spain. Hi, Vinny. Inko, what a surprise. Hiya, Inky. When Sophia sees Olivia, she puts on her biggest smile. And Olivia, so good to see you spending time out of her room. Uh, thanks, auntie. Well, you guys started the game night? Inko, you better beat her senses yet? What's with you guys? They wanted me to beat her so bad. It's funny. Nah, he hasn't. He's getting a hang of it though. So you never know, yeah? Hear that, Liv? He's coming for you. Yeah, sure. When he ties both my arms behind my back. Actually, no. I'd still win. Oh, you know the rules. You gotta put up or shut up. Interesting. Interesting. What a fun family. She won. It leaves a certain sting I don't think will ever heal. The uniform authority disappointed grimaces on David and Vinny's face tell me they won't let it heal either. There's a knock on the door. Vinny jumps up to get it. Hi, Dad! The figure stumbles in through the blizzard and removes his heavy jacket. Jeez, this weather. <laughs> hey, all. Ain't God, didn't expect it to still be here. Good evening, Randy. Randy tosses down the bag of salt that's on his shoulder to the living room floor with a loud thud. Playing games together, I see. I hope that means you all got your homework all squared away. Yeah, it's taken care of. Vinny threw his in the garbage disposal, though. I didn't. C's denying it. Ha, ah, hey, war club, huh? So. Nope, he hasn't. It's embarrassing. First time, then. Even if it weren't, it's just bad. Fine, you guys want to try? No way, this is something else. I'm watching this to the end. Vinny nods in a respectable agreement. Well, I join you kids, but it's my turn to figure out during it tonight. Need something warm after everyone's been out in that frigid cold all day? Your mother's nearly frozen solid. Something warm does sound good right about now. Oh, I just remembered. Hold on, I think I got something. Aha! I hold, a, I hold out a coupon I was compensated with from the art contest. Okay, I think I can skip this. Welcome back, everybody. I take the distraction to snipe her from across the map. It's fair. He got you. Randy shoots Damon off his spot in the recliner. He joins us on the couch. Oh, man. This is so cute. What the fuck, man? We play a few more games and I keep losing. But every time I would get close, she would come in clutch and completely annihilate me. Somehow, a betting pool got started. Olivia's getting a few bucks from the rest if I can beat her even once. 
The pains encourage me as I get even ever closer to actually scoring against Olivia. If anything, I want to get at least that tonight. At some point, in all that excitement, the feeling occurs to me. Being in the comfort of a warm, inviting home, surrounded by such caring people, having fun with my friends. Honestly, Inko's parents are winners when it comes to money. But as parents, they're, they're losers. My god, they, they never show up. It's like I have a real family. She doesn't cover while she reloads. I see it. Hey, that's cheating. Nope, just insider information. He's gonna get you. Nope, that's how it's gonna be. I got one last trick up my sleeve. I think you're just scary. Aww. I don't know how any of you are keeping up with all this. Oh, that would be our dinner. Sorry, I tried to skip it. Randy heads over the door with a hand already reaching for his wallet. Pizza? What special occasion? Gonna treat ourselves good and eat good tonight, hun. That's a special occasion. Not that I'm complaining about pizza, but isn't delivery pricey these days? Randy returns with a box of stack on his arms, flashing the used coupon in his other hand to Sophia. Her face dons an expression similar to the others earlier. See? Okay, everyone get a plate and get some. Feel free to make a mess if you want cleanup duty. Damien and Vinny leap from their positions and have their plates in the blink of an eye. Okay, welcome back everyone. Just a slight small skip. Oh, come on Liv, I just want to try it. Nope, anchovies are gay girl only. You wouldn't take something from your girlfriend, would you, Inko? All right, you got me there. You got me there. You got us. You got us there, Olivia. You got us there. She flutters her eyelashes at me while presenting a prominent pout. But I, I'll be honest, everyone. I'm a connoisseur of equal rights and equal lefts. So no, gimme, gimme. I just want to try it though. Where eyelash, flu eyelash fluttering, I can even see a moistness in her eyes. Oh wow, she gives a new meaning to crocodile tears. But the devilish clever idea spawns within my mind. After all, if she wants to play the girlfriend card. How about a trade or something? The pout fades away in her confusion. Trade for a bite? Her confusion morphs to curiosity. Hmm, maybe. What are you offering? With a smile, I lean in closer to Olivia. And closer? And closer still. Olivia's face is aflame with her blush, growing hotter and hotter by the second. I feel a puff of hot air from her nose flow against my chin. Yo, this is getting hot, man. This. My lips tap lightly on the edge of her maw. Oh, what? The gator successfully stunned. Now's my chance. We can go in for the kill and chop down the slice she was holding on to. I pulled away from her while chewing on my hard-won prize. Pizza is very salty but rich with flavor. I can taste why she likes anchovies on her pizza. Olivia's eyes are still wider and her mouth is cycling open and closed. Ew, mom! Inko gave Olivia cuties. Food tastes best when stolen. Oh, Olivia, you okay? His hand waves inches in front of her face. I don't think she even notices. With a sigh, Mrs. Payne leans over and taps Olivia's shoulder. That finally wakes her up. Her eyes are now shifting between me and the bite marks I left on her pizza. Eyelids lowering, she glowers at, glowers at me while taking a bite of her defied slice. Olivia makes quick work. Alright. With everyone else focused on their meal, she leans in close. Dangerously close. My cheeks are the ones warming up right now and they're not the cheeks you think. You owe me more for the bite. She always had a bit of a huskiness in her tone, but... Wow. She's hot. <laughs> the sun was hanging low by the time the pizza was, was finished. Which meant it was time. It didn't take much to convince Damon Miss Payne, Mr. Payne to take me out to the fountain once Olivia fully explained why. We are at the park? Whoa. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Just the task at hand. Welcome back everybody. So everybody went outside, the family went outside and they went to the fountain together and then um, Mr. Photographer over here, Incognito, took pictures and now we're back in the Payne, Payne household. Payne's household, wait. I don't know. You still owe me. Come on, seriously? It was just a bite. It wasn't just a bite. Oh god, she's gonna take a, gonna take a bite out of us if you know what I'm talking about. Her face is on fire, but her eyes remain locked in. That didn't count. Oh, uh, what? Uh, ahem. That peck on the nose, it doesn't count. Olivia, I don't understand. That was our first kiss. For oh, 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 I had to be considered that it was our first kiss. Suddenly, my face begins to heat up rapidly. It just came to me and felt so natural to do it. Well, uh, alright, uh, 
She crossed her arms. Olivia might have looked intimidating if she weren't also splayed out across my lap while she did it. So you want an actual... With interest. Whoa, yo, um... Yo, we're in the living room, my man. Uh, a fair trade. Even as I look down at her with incredulity, Olivia maintains a serious face and posture. Locked in a staring contest with her, I feel my lack of shades has weakened my defenses. I cave in. Alright, I owe you a real kiss. And what else? I wanna go on a date. An actual romantic date. The split second I get my chair back. Alright, so the first part... Oh, oh my, what's happening here? I can feel her hand shake as she slowly guides me downward. It's awkward and slightly painful how I have to twist at my waist to meet her, but it's worth it. It's soft, chaste, skin and scale pressing lightly together. The hot air of our breath intermingles. I support myself with my arms over her. Her arms move on my head to around my neck. Our eyes grew heavy. I don't know who faded first, but Olivia clung to me as we drifted to sleep just like that. Interesting. It's quiet. The only sign of life is the light breathing of the girl holding me close. She's wrapped her arms around one of mine, gently nibbling my shoulder in her sleep. She's warm. I start drifting back to sleep, lulled in my in by Olivia's soft breathing. My thoughts are drift between sleep and awake. They're puzzle pieces that slowly come together into a single, unified phrase that wholly captures what I'm feeling. I love her. I feel a horrible disturbance approaching. Inky, live! Wake up! The cursed beast plants both of its feet to my chest, shaking me by the collar. <laughs> okay, Vin is growing on. It's, it's growing, man. It's growing to. Uh, it's gro What's this phrase? Growing into me? Is that the phrase right there? Olivia responds by swatting him clean off with her tail. He's fine. Olivia sets herself up, wiping the sleep from her eyes. Morning, Inko. Saturday morning. A check on my phone says that it's half past seven. Four hours too early. Barely. This kid's gotta. This kid gotta calm down. Okay. When I was a when I was a young lad like him, I was. <laughs> I think I was already. Waking up early for me was always a big problem. I don't know why. The TV flickers alive, and Vinny starts flicking through the channels at a speed only he can comprehend. I'm skipping this. First, I sketch out what's meant to be a full-body portrait of Olivia. Okay. Now, the wheelchair ends up looking like it's a normal chair with rocks for wheels, her hands being just claws, and her tail shrunken down to a quarter of its actual size. It still resembles her. I clip on the mechanical pencil and slowly reach over with the pad, nudging the back of Olivia's head. She swats at it and eventually grabs it, yanking it in front of her. And then her tail starts wagging a bit. Bingo. Whoa! It searches for my arm and wraps around it while Olivia furiously jots something down on the page. I lean forward to lay on my stomach beside her when she passes it back. She's drawn on an equally rough portrait of me with my shades missing and my jacket looking more like a button-up. For a while, the two of us resume our drawing game from the start of the school year. Wow, look at... <laughs> Is that Mia? Yeah, what is this? Over the course of the summer, I show is run with decorate numerous sheets from her sketchpad with nonsensical doodles. Alright, it's time. Reese is Inko? If I look at is that Keanu Reeves? John Wick? Lots of cool references, look at that. I make sure my arm's position is shielding the page. This next drawing has to be special. Let me see just a spot for it. Oh my god, this guy got that cute artist Riz. My heart flutters a bit as I look it over. Could it be a little better? No, it's perfect. I pass the sketchpad over just as I have a half a dozen times now. Olivia stares at the little doodle in the page. I hear her breathing pick up. She pulls the pad aside well out of my vision. I feel the bed wobble. She fiercely scribbles something down. It sure is taking a while. On screen, the battle whatever has just finished an epic duel. Winning with an intelligent use of technique and his sword sheath. All without killing anyone. The pad is plopped in front of me. 
You in three seconds. Enter. Oh boy. Oof. Yo. Wait a minute. Olivia buries her snoot into the back of my head, nuzzling it aggressively. She ma she's making those bellowing noises again. Yo, what's oh this is this is really cute, man. You know, as you progress, everything's going too well. You know, it's ending four. That's how you know these games, uh, Snoot game and this. When it feels like there's some bumps along the road, oh, you don't, you won't, you're not getting the perfect ending. That's what I'll say. You know what I'm saying? There's no closure for uh, or a character is not getting their uh, character arc properly. I'll take that as a resounding yes. You're not gonna let, let me up, are you? Mm, no, you're all mine. Whoa, uh, this is getting hot here. It's getting real hot. She keeps bellowing, but her focus slowly returns to the episode. For the rest of it, we remain like this. I got big plans. Just you. Can't let my personal heating rock lose its warmth. So here we are in the living room once again. It was like, I think we fast forwarded one week. I said I think because I skipped the part. Don't worry though. It wasn't that crazy important. It was like a recap. Going back to the game. Appreciate it. Olivia nuzzles in the crook of my neck and wraps her tail around my waist. Trying her best to warm me up. One would assume that a little cold-blooded Saurian would be a terrible way of warming up. I mean, unless you're talking about what another kind of warming up. Mm -hmm. that's, that's by taking a hot shower but then you'd be cold after okay moving on well whoever they are they're dead wrong setting the plastic bag on the floor it begins getting passed around and everyone removes their various goodies in seconds demons chug this battery acid energy drink ah that's what i needed say you up for another trip inko olivia signals a vinny takes the empty bottle and bobs him in the back of the head with it Oh, Inko, while you were out, I finally thought of something. For a date? Yeah, you love it. It's... Someone's knocking. Olivia's breath catches. The two of us wait in anticipation as Randy gets the door. But we both know what it is already. Olivia, package for you. Oh, hey, here new wheels. My head jostles to and fro. Olivia's excitement translating physically to her arms quaking wildly around my collar. Damn, she's, she's never been this happy, man. Settle down, settle down. Randy hefts the box containing her new wheelchair parts into the living room and sets it in front of the TV. Want me to set it up for you? Actually, Olivia lifts herself on the couch and starts pushing against the box, sliding it towards her room. Inko and I can do it. Alright. Do what? Hey, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, daddy, yo, whoa. Uh, what's in the bad, you know? Come on, come on, what are you waiting for? Let's get to it. Man, I miss my nose not being clogged, right? Like, both of your no like nose holes. Just you get Remembering that you can breathe fresh air easily. Yeah. Enjoy the little things, as they say. We sit on the edge of the bed with the box before us. Olivia takes a deep breath and extends a single claw. And in a single motion, slice the tape open, letting the box flaps close. She starts picking the individual parts out and laying them around. While she does so, I pick out the instructions. Really? What? Come on, give me that. She takes instructions and okay. Alright, ripping them to bits, huh? She doesn't need it. She's her. Why, you? I break it, I fix it, simple as, and I broke it a lot when I was younger. Okay, curiosity peak. How? Olivia turns with the biggest grin on her face. Ramp jumps. Huh. She's also a skater gal. She doesn't elaborate and said waddling over to her desk to retrieve a small hex key set. For the next 15 minutes, we begin to assemble the wheelchair. As it turns out, building this thing isn't as complex as I thought it'd be. Most of it really... Just a uh, wait, most of it is really just as simple as connecting it tab A into the slot B. Okay, there's an in the window there. We're near finished now. The metal frame stands proud, missing everything you needed to make it comfortable. Like the seat. 
this bit connects to the handles there. All right. So that idea for the date? Oh yeah. Have you ever been to a hibachi grill? I've heard of them. They're great. You gotta try it. They sit you down at the table, right? In the middle of the table is a big flat top grill. Then the chef hand me that piece right there. Thanks. The chef comes in with a cart full of stuff that you ordered, and they cook it, you know, in front of you. And then they bring a whole new meaning to playing with your food. Sounds pretty sweet, right? By the way, that goes the other direction. Whoops. Yeah, that honestly sounds pretty fun, Liv. It's like dinner in a show, but dinner is the show. I've been wanting to eat at a place like that for years. Alright then, as soon as we finish this, let's call for a table and go. Yes! Yo, a date already? This is getting wild. After attaching the arm and the rest of the handle, stand up in triumph. Well, like I said, they say that your new wheelchair is completely by yours, truly. You put the wheel on backwards there. See, if I had sat in that, it would have crumpled and it would have killed me. Oh. She like it taps me one of the spare parts? Yeah, so stop trying to kill me. Just to be safe, we're probably gonna have to go back a few steps to make sure this thing is built correctly. Wonderful. <laughs> Fine, it's done. She inspects it and says, you know what? It's all good. It's all right. Carefully, she moves herself from her bend to the seat. So how is it? Darn it, my legs still don't work. Yeah, you did great. It feels just like the old one. Great job, Inky. Phew! Don't sigh yet. The night's just getting started. Ooh, you ready? It'll be cold. I'll be fine. I got a personal furnace with me. Yo, this is getting... I, I said spicy, you know. This is getting hot. Furnace? Not something sweeter like heated blanket or comforter? Yeah, no. I say that and then my aunt and uncle would be giving me the talk all over again. Oh, because that kind of sounds like something else entirely when we think about it. Welcome back. They took the metro and we are now here in this hibachi grill. Konnichiwa, welcome! A table for two, I presume? And that's how I get cancelled, everyone. Yes, I called earlier for a reservation. The waitress takes a moment to look at the ta ta tablet. Tablet. I am artistic. I'm an artist, alright. Look at that. I couldn't read that. Tab tablet. Come on. Oh my god. I'm cooked. Ah, yes. Table for Mr. Nido and guests. Follow me. Grabs us a menu, leads us to the main dining area. Regarding to the restaurant, I take in the design, interior, you know, seeing various set pieces, decor, and all that shabazz. We, we are now in the main dining area, and we can hear the lively conversation flood my ears. Mrs. Olivia said, each table had a grill in the center where the chef was chopping, dicing, and slicing, my man. I can feel my mouth filling up with drool. Finally, we reach our table. Enjoy! So how would you... My hand waves over Olivia around her chair's handlebars. Olivia seems to understand what I'm about to entail because without a word, she effortlessly, effortlessly hoists herself out of her wheelchair into the dining chair. Nice, so how are you feeling so far, Liv? Olivia smiles, letting her cold fingers splay out near the grill before us. Her tail curls up over the counter and joins them. I join her for a few seconds, warming my knuckles. I already like this place. It's like a combo of a show, a, a diner, and a sauna. I wish for the menu. Let's see. You already know what you want to get? Sushi. I got the good stuff here. Mmm, a connoisseur, ma 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 mademoiselle. Nevertheless, it looks appetizing. What about you? I'm thinking something warm and filling. Oh, what about this dish then? True Dawn Delight. Chicken breast, hibachi steak, and colossal shrimp slightly seasoned and grilled. Ah, kinda like a variety dish. Sounds good enough for me. Mm hmm. The section in particular takes up nearly the entire page. It's something I recall from some of the foodie blogs I'd read. Hey, why don't we try all the appetizers? What? Laying the menu flat before to the appetizer page, your eyes widen how many choices there are. Yeah, like we should try sampling everything and see which is best. That would be expensive though, BF. It would. Each plate already costs over $15. Oh my god. Convert that in our local money, that's $750. For $750, you could get a lot more at McDonald's, but it's 
but consider the experience. I can see her practically salivate, salivating as she looks at the page. How about half then? 7 plates times 15. That's... Oh my goodness, that's why. That's like 90, right? Am I wrong there? Somebody correct me there. 15 times... 75 is 5. You get 6, you get 90, you get 105. Oh my god, 105 dollars. That's 5k here in the Philippines, my mans, my sleep, you know, sleepy heads. Hmm, mm, okay. She got me up before I can cheer, but not all at once, alright? Huh? I want to appreciate the show too. The two dishes at a time. Okay, sure. No problem out there, you know? Sure, sure. So which do you... We debate which appetizers to pick. It start with our voices now mingling with the rest of the... Of the ambience as we wait to order. By the time somebody comes around, we've combined a list of the most appealing sounding options. Banwa, my hungry looking friends. Oh, I'm definitely hungry looking, but Olivia? Her eyes are the size of her plate. Her lips are trembling over her smile and her chopsticks creak within her fingers. Her first time here, I assume. Mine too. Hi, new friends to our lovely city. Allow me to give you a proper vocal there. Welcome. Oh my, he's gonna, he's gonna, Welcome back to Hibachi Chef. This time, episode one. A couple to be impressed? Ooh, will they be impressed or will, there, will they be tough customers? Find out soon the next episode of Hibachi Chef. He holds up a bottle of clear liquid and squirts into the cup. Oh, foosh! I reel back at a sudden heat erupting from the onion cane of fingers tapping just above my eyes. Oh shit, my eyebrows. You're fine, Inko. Relax. Confirming a few bits of air still on my head, the chef laughs and slides the onion creation around. Well, uh, warm enough of a welcome? Quite. He laughs as the onions are added into our first appetizer plate, a sampler of various garnished fish and meats. Olivia is quick to take a still sizzling piece of steak and chop on it, chewing on it even as her eyes water from the heat of it. The chef notices and uses his spatula to slide Olivia's, Olivia's glass of water closer to her, which she used to quickly cool her tongue. I am happy to see you so eager to enjoy my cooking, but a good meal is best savored slowly. And this is how I get cancelled, huh? My hand rubs Olivia's back and convert, but she still smiles and reaches for another cut of steak. Totally worth it. One by one, more of our appetizers are given to us. While I would normally go into detail about each one's unique flavors and how it affects my palate, only one thing really comes to mind. It's freaking delicious. Olivia seems to have the same sentiment, currently scarfing down the rest of her salmon rolls. Any couples here tonight? For a moment, I glance at a girl beside me, enjoying her own little moment as she chows down on her food. We are. Ah, uh, well, it's a holiday season, which means... What is that? What is the man? What is that? It's mistletoe. A kiss between the gentleman and the wani girl, yes? Whoa! Tender. A lingering pleasantness fills my heart as a chef tosses the mistletoe on a steak, revealing its true identity as a garnish. Hey, what does wani mean? It means gator. Oh, mind blown! I wanna hug that gator. I wanna gator that gator. Wait, whoa, oh, ew! <laughs> oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. I guess I do look like a gator. Yeah. I'm always thinking of you as the green gator girl. Really? What, uh, suppo opposed to the green baronix girl? You see Damon refer to him as the red Dilophosaurus guy, too? Hey, Amingo, wow, I just heard a noise. I created my head towards the direction of the pink f the lapelo. The lap the lapelo the lapelo by la and the blue a follow the a follow I butchered their name so brutally I I think I caused the extinction event. I get it. Good. Everyone, I just met the triceratops. In fact, I met two. Shut up. I use my chopsticks to fling an onion over to her. She definitely chomps it out of the air. Okay, who ordered the scallions? <gasps> oh, oh, that's us. With one last bite of shrimp, we finish our meal. The chef spins his utensils and gives us a bow, bidding us a wonderful evening. I manage to sleep him a generous tip as thanks for his hospitality. As the waitress hands me the bill, she asks if we'd like some complimentary ice cream, which Olivia happily accepts. I mean, complimentary? Some dessert? 
Why not, my man? It's not long till we're cutting open sweet, flaky shells of fried cake batter to get to the cool and tasty ice cream cores of our free dip, deep fried ice cream. Ice cream. Cold be damn. I need something sweet to cap that off. Actually, it would be all right for a while. I got an idea. Um, all right. Trust me, I'll be right back. Oh God, another stupid idea by Inko. All right, man. We're letting it, letting him cook. What, what does he have in mind? What's he gonna buy? I'm back. Your ice cream was starting to melt. I was considering eating it. Rude. After I went out and got these just for you. I handed her the plastic bag. Pocket warmers. How considerate of you, Inky. She stuffed them in the pocket of her hoodie, cracking them to start the heating. I grabbed her wheelchair and unfolded next to her, offering a hand to help her into it. There's still a whole city out there. Wanna go see it? She takes my hand, interlocking her fingers between my own. Absolutely. Alright. Back outside, I finished the last of my dessert and let out a sigh of satisfaction. That was delicious. Couldn't agree more, though I'm not sure how fond I am of having the smell of a botch in my clothes. Better than that cologne you always use. Ooh, hoo -hoo, you notice that? Her head suddenly turns away, focusing instead on the open air mark in the distance. I'm like, Inko, she's literally... They're so close to one another. The only, the only thing that's keeping you apart are pretty much your clothes. So, I'm pretty sure she can smell it. While we're in Little True Dawn, the weather makes food traffic non-existent. Non the town is ours. Where do you want to go first? I want to go to you. Oh, 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 dude, I'm sorry. That way I got a great feeling about it. All right, let's get it in. Let's get it. Oh, now we're back. To, we're here in Little True Dawn. With Olivia as my guide to make our way towards the shopping center. Man, as if the main part of the city's holiday lighting wasn't captivating already, Little True Dawn is just as whimsical. Fairy lights wrap around the street lamps while paper lanterns hang along the streets, illuminating our path in a reddish hue. Holiday cheer and cultural tradition mesh perfectly together. We're here. Here looking to be some kind of Arabian night. I'm just kidding. Bizarre from Arabian Bizarre. Bizarre from a movie except built into a building. There's a walls and even a ceiling, though the ceiling is plastic and semi-transparent. But the walls are all cut into with cheap canopies jutting from the tops of the openings and so many colorful knickknacks hanging from them and over tables equally filled to bursting with the plethora of items. Every other stall I see a cellar station right next to a cheap heater waving and shouting at anyone who passes by. While the streets are looked devoid of people, the shopping center was packed to the brim. That's the one? The one? I just know it. Lead the way. Okay then, let's get in here. What is this? Toys and music uh, shirts and whatnot. Let's see what's in it. Ooh, cool knickknack store. Further down the shopping center, we reach a section of the indoor market. It looks almost like a convenience store. Shelves upon shelves of exotic produce and place along very every wall of the store. In the center, a display showcasing snacks and candies with ineligible signs and cutesy mascots. The ceiling's now covered in greenery, more pro paper lanterns and banners adorning more Japanese texts. Olivia's eyes light up with glee upon seeing the wide array of oriental goodies. Yay! You know, let's make this our Christmas shopping. He nods and grins and starts scanning each stall slowly. Immediately, I'm drawn to one that's exceptionally vibrant from all the toys on show. Some of the plastic figures are even making noises, though there's a certain ratiness to them. Still, I'm sure I can find something for Vinny. Recalling our first meeting, I look for any power raptor figure I can find on the table. Aha! Being up a package figure, I wave Olivia over for you know sugar to treat. Think Vinny will like this? She quirks an eyebrow briefly and then gives me the flattest stare I've ever seen. No. Why not? Ingo, that's such a shitty bootleg. Like it's not even named right. Okay, let's see. Powerful raptorials. Huh. Yeah, a lot of stuff a lot of this stuff is cheap knockoffs. You want the good stuff you gotta look in the back the back all right let's check out the back then the deeper we go the more boxes there are opposite the oh, and opposite the, that a wall covered with lots of swords and knives pretty cool if you ask me a weapon rack i uh, don't think sophia would approve oh yeah no takes colossal effort on her part to turn herself around Partially from how cramped the space is, but mainly how her eyes lingered on a particular sword on the shelf. 
Looking closer, it kind of looks like the one from a show we watched together. Neat. Maybe. Nah, Sophia definitely wouldn't approve. Then why not put it in your place, Inko? Clearly, your parents don't give two shits. Wooded weaponry counts as toys. Yeah, I don't know what's a good gift for this one, you know. Olivia, I got this for you. Ooh. I place a little toy in her hand. She brings it closer to mine. Look, you can bob it with a little high hammer. Inye. 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 Ekumbokum. Ow. I know, just a place for it. This is going right in my little treasure hoard. The thought brings a smile to my face. Did you find what you're looking for? Yep. She pulls out a few colorful bottles from her chair's compartment. These babies will look great on the canvas. They are just the colors I needed too. Oh, how is it different from regular paint from the store? It just is. It just is, Inko. Okay. I also got Auntie a roll of fall silk. She's always wanted to work with silk. An hour later, we've seen just about everything. I have to, I might have to, oh my god, I have to do like an hour and 30, another hour and 30 video. I don't want to get caught in tight alleyways in the city after dark, so Olivia and I call it a night and start heading back to the metro station. We make one last turn to come to the entrance and whoa! It's a large circular clearing, the wildest space I've seen around here, probably meant for performers and such. In the center is a huge, huge Christmas tree. How did we miss this coming in? Whoa. We both have the green our next to see the star on top. It looks mosaic or mosaic. Each panel a different color to create a star within a wreath and the entire entirety of the glow from a singular light source from within. The colored lights bounce off of us as we approach. They color Livia's snout in the reds, blues, purples, even some more vibrant greens. Even her breath coming out as vapor is lit up like it's part of the Christmas tree. For a moment, we stare at the Christmas tree in silence. All I can hear is the subtle ambience of our surroundings. It's serene. Was this a nice break? Yeah. But you know me, I'm itching to get back into it. We look back up at the tree. It's bright. Merry Christmas, Olivia. Christmas is until another few weeks. I know, just felt like saying it. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to filthy animal. Yeah, home alone. Man, I'm old. Olivia's hand, hand, Olivia's hand finds mine, our fingers intertwining slowly, and our palms press warmly together. She doesn't speak, but her eyes convey so much. I carefully set down her shopping bags and take a knee beside her. She leans over her chair's armrest, bringing her head close until she can rest her chin on my shoulder. I can feel her lips move in a silent whisper as she nuzzles against me gently. A smile comes to my face as she mouths her appreciation for her first official date. Following example, I lean my head back against her. My jaw moves but no words come out. After all, we don't want to disrupt the peaceful silence. But still, I know Olivia understands my own word is thanks as I feel her lips quirk into a smile. We stayed pressed together for some time. I listened until my knees couldn't bear the stone floor and her scales couldn't handle the cold. Along with the comfortable signs to continue, I stand up and slowly take us back to the station. The ride home, we're lucky enough to get the whole train car to ourselves. Olivia Hunter's close the whole way back. Welcome back everybody. Now we are in the we're now in the winter formal event. Or rather the beginning beginning of it. It's a big night for myself and Olivia. I'm at her place now. She sits beside me on the, beside me in the bed, hard at work finishing the painting. I hold her I hold her other hand while she carefully brushes. On occasion, Olivia glances nervously at the clock. Each tick is another second possibly wasted. She's really working down to the wire. That's not to say she let the deadline creep up on her. Of course, quite the opposite. Every day after school until bedtime, she's been working hard at it. And now just needs the finishing touches. She was so anxious today, just completely beside herself. Pestering me during lunch and throughout her cla our class together about how she wants to finish this right away. She set up for dragging me back to her place. A split second class ended. Good thing I thought ahead and brought my formal clothes the night before. Brand new Maw Blazer by Jacquard Bavianuk. Are you okay? Freshly tailored slacks pressed to perfection. And pa I'm not reading that. This is too fancy for me, my man. Tiny errant flecks of paint jump off the canvas beside me. Each one gives me a mini heart attack. She told me not to, but I can probably sneak a glance out of the corner of my sunglasses. So try to get a peek. However, a claw gently flicks my cheek. 
Followed by little growl. No. No peeking. Come on, you said you need me here for support and I can't even see it? No peek, just sit. Sit and watch peak fiction. Hey, Bars! Almost biblical. She gestures at the TV she set up to play manic as background noise. Do you think you're finishing time? Absolutely. Careful not to wear out your fingers. I can make it. I just need you here. Oh, that's... No, that's... That's a relationship right there that I can get behind. Though her tail would slither its way to me, it, along with guts, occupied my lap and my actual support became evident as my hand ran over both scale and fur, eliciting cooing noises of comfort for my girlfriend and her pet. Really, I felt more like glorified pet sitter watching over the oddest friendship between a snake and a rat. But it was part of a process for this, so I obliged content to wait, content to wait to see it again distribute in time. Plus, Olivia really did have good taste in shows. I'm a little disappointed I won't get to finish this one tonight. Ah, last we have more important matters. Okay, okay, I think it's ready. Is she holds up a finger to my lips, appraising her work. Scanning for any minute flaw. Yes, this is it. Oh, can I see? Not yet, and it's dry. But I need to wash up for my big date. She holds out her arms, absolutely splattered with purples and blues, and get changed. So, um, out. Well, I'm being kicked to the street, no longer useful. Darn right, go mingle with the plebeians for a while. I squeeze her hand and get up from the bed. Come on, I want to show you my dress. Alright, alright, I'm going. This is the season to be jolly and the pains and place tips up to the saying. Warm, nostalgic, inviting, comforting. Even outside the house is adorned with a ray of color for Christmas lights. Alright, so everyone's ready. Everyone's just chilling right now. Okay. Hey, everyone. Ingo, is it true you ordered a... Shh, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a surprise for her, hun. Oh, my bad. Thanks again for covering most of it, Inko. It's pretty exciting to get one of those. Yeah, Olivia's going to love it. Ah, yes. The fancy limo. Though I can't help but feel like we should pitch in more. Ah, don't worry about it. It was my idea after all. Nice jacket, by the way. Why, thank you. Just then, Damon takes a seat right next to this, casually singing an arm around her. Yippee! Damon looks my way with flickering eyebrows and a smug 2D grin. He knows his one. With suave moves like that, I should keep it in mind to use on Olivia. Could work, or you could lose an arm. I don't know, man. Sophia looks like she's about ready to burst with excitement and can't hold it in any longer. Oh, my little boy's all grown up to be a man. Mom. No, no, son. It's every parent's God-given right. I read this. Okay, I've read this as well. Where's Vinny when you need him? All right. Okay, big sleepover. The karate team. Accident making a mess, yada yada. I think I've read this. I think we could like, yeah. Why are we all looking at the giant licorice whip? A scratchy voice draws my attention and I turn to see. Damn. I'm genuinely floored. The dress, the accessories, the makeup. Elegance springs to mind. Regal too. But what escapes my lips is beautiful. The others are also complimenting her but she pays them no mind. She's looking only at me as I am her. Bashfully, Olivia looks away at last and I clear my throat. My cheeks feel exceptionally warm and Olivia is practically a glow. You look beautiful, Olivia. Thanks, Inko. Auntie Sophia, help me the dress. It twirls her chair. Okay, okay, I like that. Look at that. She's so happy, my man. Oh, please, Olivia. You worked on that dress too. Only with a fitting, Auntie. Her twirling finally stops so that she can bring her chair closer to me. I find myself on one knee, hands and arms helping to ease her from her wheelchair and onto the couch. It's been second nature for a while. With Olivia settled nicely there, I, re I retake my spot just beside her. A Satan glove. Satan black. I think I'm pretty sure I'm, cor I'm correct in that one. Gloved hand finds its place in my palm and Olivia's head leans slightly against my shoulder. I feel as though my face is aflame with heat. And I don't mind, man. As the girl beside me presses closer. Now, now, don't get cozy, you two. Your ride to the former should be getting here any minute. Olivia's head leaves my shoulder so she can look to Sophia. Aren't we taking Liz's car? I wouldn't mind, but with these clothes, nah, uh sister? Ingo thought of a better idea. We all pitched in, though. Olivia's looking at me now, squinting ever so slightly with scrutiny. What did you do? Well... Walk <laughs> 
That, I did that. Damien Liz already moving towards the door. I get up and take hold of Olivia's wheelchair, stabilizing it for her. Inko, what? Good night, Randy. Sophia, I'll have her home tomorrow morning. Inko, have fun, you two. Don't do anything we wouldn't. Randy? <laughs> Yo, this guy. Randy sure is Randy, you know what I'm saying? My man, my man's the wingman. That's what I'm saying right there. The gator head finally steals, and I'm sure her eyes are as wide as saucers. She sees what's parked in front of the house. Figured for such a big night, we deserve to ride in style. What about the tomorrow morning bit? Oh, we're gonna hang out at my place after. Is that why I'm missing my favorite PJs? The limousine driver's already at the passenger door, holding it open for us. I gently push the wheelchair towards the vehicle as she continues to stare at it in awestruck silence. Okay, wow, alright, this is... If I may, you may. I carefully take the painting from her with both hands and place it against the back seat. Once Olivia's satisfied, it's her turn. Yo, she's fancy, my man. And this is her idea. Oh wow, it looks even nicer than on the website. Hey, Inky, the bar's free. Alright, I read that, man. Damien, yeah, you go for the bar, man. I'm not, I'm not reading what you said already. Oh, pay for me, go. Awesome. Alright, let's go. Pull two glasses of cola for the, from the tiny fridge. Using his dude like that was impressive, not gonna lie. He cracks open the second one with relative ease. For you. He gestures with his bottle if I'd like, like one. Sure. Careful don't spill the painting. Even the drop lands on it and I murder roll you. Yeah, of course. Can I see it? No. No one lays eyes on it until we set it up in the memorial room. I promise myself that. Whoa, you made that the painting without even looking at it? She did. Wow. Shut up, both of you. <laughs> I lean back into the plush seating, letting my arm rest gently over Olivia's shoulder. She leans her head into my shoulder in response, a low coo escaping from her mouth. My kind of um, story right here. This is gonna be this is insane. This is good. Christmas lights dance and flicker across the face of buildings, turning what would normally be a bland color palette into something much more vibrant. The whole ride there, we share drinks and stories of the past semester. It's like the party's already started. I've already got a big name, this jockey this year. I can't wish I can't wait to dance. Alright, I read this. I read this like it's the Bible. Let me let me skip a little bit. Alright, everyone. I'm gonna be yapping random stuff. But what this is nice. This is really different from ending one, two, and three. I mean I'm, I think three was the most um, it, a little bit different, diverge, you could say, because there are some different showcasing of uh, characters. There are the um, fire dancers there. You know, it's a, it's just a wild, wild ride from start to finish. I think this is longer than Snoot Game. Am I correct? I think so. Because in Snoot Game, I'm pretty sure I didn't skip through any of that. I I literally. Except for the la for the latest ones, ending one and two, because my man, oh, I was tough. I right, going back to the game. Let thanks for helping me do this, Inko. I smile and squeeze Olivia's hand. She squeezes back. Shining moment finally comes as our limousine pulls into the open car carport in front of the venue, drawing the attention of the crowd. We wait for another minute or so in anticipation before the passenger door opens wide. Taking initiative, I step onto the open as the driver sets up the wheelchair with a flourish. Our ride makes a great set piece. Okay then. Whoa, is that? It's Inko Olivia. Oh my god, they're amazing. <laughs> yep, carefully remove the painting. That painting... I'm, I'm hyped for the painting actually. I'm curious. Have a good evening, sirs and madams. Okay then, a good... A, did, it, did it tip him? I don't know. We approach a signing table where a sizable line of other partygoers look our way. Hmm, figures? Oh, I'm an organizer with the painting for the memorial. You are too, sorta. What's that mean? It means we can just waltz right in. Sweet! Circumnavigating the line, we see a familiar blue dino handling the sign in and looking exceptionally exhausted. Though he smiles as usual when he sees us, his shifting eyes and rapid finger tapping indicate otherwise. Oh, hey, you guys, you made it. And uh, in a limo, no less. Got the traveling style. I couldn't agree more. Ben then makes eye contact with Olivia. And it's nice to see you up and about again, Olivia. I mean, crap, I didn't mean it like that. Hey, Ben. 
The tired teen double takes, clearly surprised that Olivia actually replied to him at all. Damon takes a moment to scribble a bit on the clipboard Ben was holding. Alright, we're signed in. Come on, Liz. Oh, dear. You seeing you guys? Whoa! Ben clears his throat as though to dislodge the shock clogging his airway from the Olivia speaking to him for once. <clears throat> How have you been? Olivia scans him over briefly. I'm holding together okay. I feel like making this has really helped. Would have liked for Mr. Riddigan to see this, but... You know, problem is, it's kind of dead. A heavy breath escapes Ben as his shoulders sag. Yeah, I... He sucks back in that breath, squaring his shoulders. I'm sure he's happy with it already, Olivia. My date looks down to her lap, eyes shut tight. But she has a soft smile and nods. Well, gotta keep the line moving, don't want to keep everyone waiting out in the cold. Right, right. Ben hands us a clipboard along with a pen. Olivia and I sign in, and I hand it back to Ben. Great, you're all set. Thanks, Ben. Of course, enjoy the night. Uh, okay, whoa. Looks like Ben is starting to grow on onto me, man. It's growing on me, actually. The memorial room is probably in one of the side halls. Hmm, they should have given us a map. It won't be that hard to find. Olivia smirks so they take the head, letting her hold the covered art piece closely. Just as I predicted, the memorial room isn't hard to find. It's a smaller room well lit with, a lit with little furniture. On the far end, a framed picture of Edekin and some of his old pictures from his classroom. Alright, from him, students. I read that, paying respects. Yes, sir. Alright. I walk alongside her as we approach the portrait. I wonder when this was taken. It can't have been that long ago. It looks just like he did earlier this year. Olivia slowly rolls up to the memorial, still clutching the covered art piece. Is there an easel around or something? I was told there'd be one. Oh! There's an adjustable hanger in the wall with bits to attach, to attach the painting hanging in the little baggie. Whoa. Wow, they thought of everything. Yeah. Can you put the hangers on? I'll hold it steady. Sure. I get the baggie. And we get the bag. We don't fumble it, man. Alright, take the covering off gently. Olivia watches carefully as I lift the cover from this angle. I can't make anything out other than the same blues and purples. She breathes a sigh of relief when she sees nothing got damaged on the trip over. I fasten the hangers at the back of the wooden structure. I hope it's good enough. It will be. Done. Damn, that's... Can we get a close-up on that? Yo, somebody get it in there. Yes, back the fuck up, okay? Oh my god, look at that. Look at that painting. It's beautiful. It's kinda, it kind of outshines all the other paintings, but... Yeah, Olivia's head turns down towards the floor for a few moments before a smile curls on her face. Finally, I can appraise the painting fully. Yes. It's definitely the fountain, as well as the park we found it at. But its colors are brilliant. See, the ma mastering your colors and your shadows and your lights can bring something from, that's a pretty good drawing, to, wow, that's a really good drawing. Exerting a heat to it with warmer colors than Olivia's used in the past. Where her previous works always had a dreamlike quality to them, this one brings the warmth of the sun to mind. Before it was the dream, now she's face, or rather, I, I think er, er, before she was in the dreamlike state, now she has accepted reality in her own way. It's a bit warm. I like it. Well, do you like it? Hell yeah, do you? I do, I'm proud of it. I was going to say something about how my opinion wouldn't matter if you did, but that's a better answer. I'm also proud of it. It's beautiful. You knocked it completely out of the park. No pun intended. I think we did. We? Yeah, without you, I really don't know if I could have finished it. Silver gray iris is turned from the new painting. And focus entirely on the portrait of the center of the display. When the sounds of the dancers still in the background, the pervading silence within the room overshadows it. Olivia's gloved hand covers mine, still on her, sh on her shoulder. Standing before her teacher's mural, I bow my head and offer him my quiet thoughts. Thanking him for teaching me. For being more than just a teacher, but a friend. And for looking after the girl I fell in love with. Ayy, well, that's pretty good, man. When my eyes open, I see that Olivia's head is still bow bowed forward. A singular droplet seeps from the corner of her eye. I gently wipe it away with my thumb before it can possibly drip down to her dress. She smiles in gratitude after and her eyes reopen. Olivia? I'm okay, Inko. Automatically following her as she spins her chair around, Olivia faces towards the door. Come on, we gotta get to the buffet. 
Why? I'm sure they'll have an... Demon's gonna steal all the good stuff. Duh. She turns a wry smile my way and speeds up her reeling. I doubt Damien could, but I can imagine him trying. Olivia becomes a veritable pl plow? Plow? Plow is like action. Plow is a bit different. Depends on the sentence. Uncaring for the other party go plow. Unveritable plow. Uncaring for the other party go. She leads us to the buffet. Not too far. And for all the sour looks that she was receiving, Olivia didn't care. Her attention was focused only on what lay before her. The cafeteria isn't far away. Tables lined the area, some for seating and others containing nothing but food. It smells so good. I will grab a pair of trays from nearby along with two sets of utensils. Olivia motions to take her seat, but I shake my head. Let me handle the food. Why? So you can actually move. You'll be putting your dress at risk trying to hold the tray and keep up with the line. With a roll of her eyes and a sigh, Olivia's hand drops back to her armrest. Fine. Olivia drew herself just outside the line, scoping out the particular dishes that she wanted. By the time I got to the end, Olivia's tray was covered with heaps of grilled meat. I decided on a more uh, 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 eclectic... Am I saying this correctly? Eclectic sampling of... Eclectic? No, it's never eclectic sampling of dishes. I wanted to savor my meal as opposed to leave his plan to devour hers. She holds our meals while I push her head to hunt down the table. Thankfully, the search is short. Once we get situated at the table, at the table David greets us with a sauce-stained grin with, while Liz nurses a tall glass of ice water beside him. Still looked happy yet exhausted. Having fun? You know it, just stop by for seconds, busting a move ain't easy. Seconds already? I told you, if we got here any later, the cafeteria would be closed. I'm not even going to question how you eat so much and still move around the way you do on the dance floor. It's all in the method. Oh please. You two plan on hitting the floor? Absolutely, I'm getting a dance tonight out of this guy. You say that as if I'd even consider turning you down. Damon's eyes close for a moment in thought. Feel like I'm forgetting- Oh, your painting, did it get set up okay? Yeah, I hung it up in the memorial room. You can see it now. Really? Hold on. Damn, this guy... This guy's... This guy's a flash, my man. Looks really good. Thanks. Oliver's finally said, Liv and I start on our meals. While I savor the tender meat of my steak, a deep vibrato reverberates in my rib gauge. I see you all are enjoying the evening. My man, Mr. Ferris. All right. The older man finally reaches and pulls up a chair to sit down. Yeah, Damon's been so sweet, Uncle Mike. The mustachioed whale nods, smiling at Liz's date. Yeah, totally. Just nothing but fun, Mr. Ferris, sir. It's the first time I've heard a fake laugh from Damien. I didn't know you'd be chaperoning, Mr. Ferris. Well, of course I would be. After all, my darling niece's first proper date. I'm starting to feel bad for Damien as I watch him sink lower in his seat. Though Liz does come to his rescue. Uncle Mike? The older man laughs as he fends off his niece's attempt to headbutt him with his massive hands. I'm not being serious, this bet, mind your head. Liz relents, scooting herself right next to her date and wrapping him in a hug. Damon sputters and looks between the two family members. Ah, uh, by the way, Olivia, I just visited a memorial. With me. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about, man? I'm having a stroke. I just visited the memorial with Miss Scaler and we saw your latest piece. Olivia pauses on her last bite of mallard. It is quite a, a work, Miss Halford. Olivia still reaches up and giddily shakes my hand around. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ferris. In fact, when your principal saw it, she immediately wanted to showcase it in St. Hammond's Gala. Specifically where Dreamscape once was. Oh, oh, oh! It's your painting, so it's up to you. I figured I'd come and let you know before you try and take it later tonight. Hmm. Olivia ponders in why, why her fork spears at a particularly slippery piece of greasy bird. I don't mind, but I'd like to take it with me when I graduate. Mr. Ferris nods, taking a small notebook from his pocket and writing some notes into it. Of course, Olivia. Hmm. How's the brisket? I may spring for some when I get some around to dinner. Try the roast duck as well. It's amazing. I think I will. Have a wonderful night, everyone. To you, yes. To he starts to turn but stops and looks at Damon and stares. Man said, you touched my knees on this night. Something's gonna happen, my man. And it ain't gonna be a date. That's what I'm talking Damien nods his way, and with that, Mr. Ferris leaves us to our meals. I'm by no means a fast eater, but I managed to finish my own meal before Olivia finishes hers. 
I lean back in my chair, stretching my arms back. Across the ballroom, I see Ben heading behind the curtain on stage. Say, that reminds me. Hey, Olivia. Hmm? Finish what's in your mouth. What? Has Ben talked with you recently? No, when we saw him earlier, it was the first time I talked to him in years. Weird? What's so weird about it? He told me weeks ago he wanted to apologize to you for everything and I said he should tell you himself in person. He said he would and it hasn't happened? Maybe he forgot. He has been very busy lately. Hmm. But we got some time, right? Why not go say hi? Alright, then we'll go say hi to the man. Olivia finishes off the last rib on her plate, gnawing at it as she calculates this decision internally. Alright, I guess if you think it's a good idea, you guys go ahead. I'm about ready to go back to breaking it down. How about you, Liz? Don't want to tire you out? Oh, I can go for a bit longer. Yeah. I'm here to party the night away. I collect our plates and quickly walk them to the collection spot for them. Olivia's moved to the side, freeing the table for another group to take it. Taking her chair's handlebars, take us around it to take I take us around the dance floor. We can clearly see Liz as we pass it, though Damon is hidden by the press of bodies. Her face and neck are once again scarlet. Jeez, wonder what Damon's doing to elicit that kind of look from her. Once we pass the crowded area of the room, I see a solitaire set of double doors at the stage's side. That must lead to the backstage area. Then let's get the, let's get there, yeah. Olivia's hand grasps the door and handle, and I draw her chair back to open it. Reaching over her, I keep the door open so she can wheel herself in, following the right after her. Alright, this is the backstage. This is a lot quieter. Uh, yeah, this curtain's thick, man. The music just stopped. Game music. Interesting. The lights are on so the staff can see all the buried animals around the moment. Okay, that's Ben. He doesn't notice her approach and jumps a little when he sees the two of us. Oh, what are you two doing back here? This place is off limits. Olivia and I want to say hey, checking on you, you know? Okay, hey. This place still off limits? Right now I'm on the I'm on the only break I get all night. You said you and Olivia wanted to see me? I don't want to hold a grudge anymore. Oh what? He puts his cup down suddenly more attentive. That's surprising. I told her about her convo from a month ago. She said you never you never wanted she said you never want you she said you never went to see her, so I got curious. Oh yeah, I did say I would, didn't I? Sorry, I, I forgot. I've been uh, busy. Alright, let me gather my thoughts. Ben runs through his hands and I'm about to run my hands through his face. Alright everybody, I'm gonna end this video right here. Subscribe, like, comment, share to friends and loved ones. I'm sorry I'm stopping. I'm tired. I also have other stuff to do within this day, by the way. So, good luck whatever everyone's doing. Sweet dreams, everyone. Bye. See you in the next episode. Ta -da!